had the opportunity to feel what it was like to be in this divine presence. And I was very curious as to how this experience would be to be in the presence of another very exalted Vaishnava, Paramahansa Vaishnava. And when we came there, uh, Sridhar Maharaj at that time was not well. He was lying flat on his bed in late in the evening, 8, 8 p.m. It was very dark, and we went to the rooftop where he resided and knelt down at his uh, bedside. And I was introduced by this devotee. And immediately he began to speak the most beautiful Harikata, the most beautiful description of the sweetness of Krishna's transcendental names, quoting so many different slokas from Rupa Goswami and so many different shastras. And this went on 10, 15 minutes, and I was just like drowning in, in this nectar of Harikata. This was my first experience of meeting him. And then we left, and I wanted to come again to have his sangha. And another day I came in the morning and had some exchange. And every time that I would meet with him, I met with him on three occasions in that year, he was always the most kind-hearted, most merciful, very, always giving so much concern and so much love and so, and giving the most wonderful explanations of the Shastras that I had never heard. So much depth he was giving. Then, on the final day when I met with him, he had spoken with us. And at that time, there was also some restriction being placed on devotees coming to see him, which later on, of course, became a very wide gulf between the, the uh, Western Iskand society at that time and him. But even in, the, even in 1979, this was beginning to take place. So he told me, he said, once I was sitting with your Gurudev, meaning our Swami Maharaj, once I was sitting with him, and I was lamenting to him, because Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had also requested Sridhar Maharaj earlier to go to the Western countries. And at that time, Srila Sridhar Maharaj did not, he, he, would, he agreed, yes I can go, but I do not feel myself that I am able to understand the intonation of the Westerners' speech. He mentioned like this. But if you order, I will go. Then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta ordered another godmother to go. But he was sitting with our Gurudev and he was expressing to him, saying that I'm very feeling very sad that I could not go to, to carry out this order of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He was lamenting in this way. And he was telling me this. And then he said, and your Gurudev, he told me, he said, that is all right. I will travel all over the world and I'll bring all my disciples to you. You can train them up to go back to Godhead. And then at that moment he leaned forward and he looked, he looked at me with her sitting very close to him and he said, So why they have made this restriction? His very soft Vaishnava heart was actually hurt by this because he had been requested by Arshila Prabhupada. He had been requested by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. And his beloved lordships, Sri Sri Radha Govinda Sundarji, this was his divine uh, duty to perform. And here was this obstruction coming. So at that time, I could not answer. And then later on, so many things happened. But what Sri Maharaj gave to us Western devotees, is a vast ocean of transcendental knowledge. Literally a vast ocean. There are so many conversations which took place between 1980 and the time when he passed away in 1988. And many books have come out so far, and many more will come out in the future. And what he gave to the Western world in the English language was utterly unique. Even one of his godbrothers, still living today, Param Pujapak Sri Srimad Patikramod Puri Maharaj, has remarked that what Sridhar Maharaj spoke in the English language, he never even gave in the Bengali language before. 
And what he spoke in English should be translated into Bengali and distributed to Bengali. <laughs> Such was the depth and the level of the Siddhanta that he gave. So I could speak so many things in glorification of Sri Maharaj. Today we're all gathered here and everyone can have opportunity, but I wanted to just read one uh, page from this Vyasa book of Sridhar Maharaj, which has just been published, which is actually um, spoken by our Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. And this was spoken in 1974 in his presence when there were many other disciples present. He was actually introducing him that to his disciples who had never met him before. We are very fortunate to hear His Divine Grace, Om Vishnu Pad, Paramahamsa Parif Rajakacharya, Bhakti Rakshak Sri Maharaj. By age and by experience, in both ways, He is senior to me. I was fortunate to have His association since a long time, since perhaps 1930. At that time, He had not accepted sannyas, but had just left home. He went to preach in Allahabad. And on that auspicious occasion, we were connected. Sridhar Maharaj lived in my house for many, many years. So, naturally, we had very intimate talks. He has such high realizations of Krishna that one would faint to hear them. He was always my good advisor, and I took his advice seriously, because from the very beginning, I knew that he was a pure devotee. So I wanted to associate with him. Krishna and our Prabhupada, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, liked him to prepare me. Our relationship was very intimate. After the breakdown of our spiritual master's institution, I wanted to organize another institution making Sridhar Maharaj the head. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur told me that Sridhar Maharaj is one of the finest preachers of Krishna consciousness in the world. So I wanted to take him everywhere. This was my earnest desire. But since he could not go around the world and preach, at least the people of the world should come to hear from him. For spiritual advancement of life, we must go to someone who is actually practicing spiritual life. So, if one is actually serious to take instructions from a Shiksha Guru or instructing spiritual master, I can refer him to one who is the most highly competent of all my God brothers. This is B.R. Sridhar Maharaj. I consider Sridhar Maharaj to be even my Shiksha Guru. So, what to speak of the benefit that others can have from this association? So, at the time of our passing of our Guru Dev, he mentioned to us that if we had questions in the future, there were two personalities that we could approach. He mentioned the name of Srila Bhakti Raksha Sridhar Maharaj, and he mentioned the name of our divine Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Vedanta So our spiritual lives will be healthy and will thrive inasmuch as we go to the lotus feet of exalted Paramahansa Vaishnavas and fully surrender at their lotus feet and serve them, as Rupa Goswami has stated, Shushru Shaya Vajana Vigyam Ananyam Anya Nindari Shunyam Vrita Ipsita Sangalabhya This is how we deal with Uttam Bhagwats. Unfortunately, in the present day, there is a very great difficulty uh, amongst many of the Western world to understand who is a Uttam Bhagwa and how to deal with him. If that problem can simply be solved, then this Krishna consciousness movement will go on in a healthy way throughout the world, just as it was going on during the time of our beloved Guru Maharaj, the Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta Swami So all of us who are present here are most fortunate because we are actually situated at the lotus feet of a very great Vaishnav who is also Snigdha, who is very affectionate, and who is giving his heart and soul also to carry out the order of his Sikshu Guru, Srila A.C. Bhaktivinanda Swami Maharaj. So on this occasion, I offer my humble Dandava pranams to the lotus feet of my beloved Sikshu Guru, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj, 
unto all of his God brothers, unto all of the Vaishnavas present, and I beg for your mercy that I may continue serving their lotus feet. Shri Bhakti Rakshashiva Mahaprabhu.